Now let's take a look at working with clips using the Smart Tool. There are two distinct regions in an enlarged clip. The header area, which corresponds to the top half of a minimized clip, and the body area, which corresponds to the bottom half of a minimized clip. So whatever function happens over the header of an enlarged clip will also happen over the top of a minimized clip, and over the body area, the lower half of a minimized clip. Notice that when editing or arranging, if the snap grid is on, the clips and smart tool will follow the snap to grid. In addition, there are also several hotspots where the smart tool changes to a particular type of editing tool. So let's take a look at working with clips. First, selection. A clip can be selected by clicking on it. Click in the header area of the clip and the now time doesn't move. Click in the body region and it does. A region of clip can be selected by click dragging in the body region. Alternatively, drag select in the time ruler and then click on the track number to complete the selection. Multiple whole clip selection can be done a couple of ways. First, right click and lasso to select the clips and note that any clip that's even partially touched by the lasso is selected. Another way is a standard Windows method of left click in combination with either the control and shift keys. Left click and drag across clips selects the region of those clips. To delete a clip, select it and then either press delete on the keyboard or choose that option from the edit or right click context menu. To mute and unmute a clip, select it and then press K or click on the clip with the mute tool. To move a clip, click drag on the header. Timeline start position can be constrained by holding down the shift key. Holding the control key down while clip dragging will duplicate the clip. Auto scroll lock is a feature that can be handy while editing. When this is on, the scroll will automatically be locked as soon as something has been selected in a track view. This means that the clip you are trying to edit won't suddenly scroll out of view. To cancel auto scroll lock, right click in the top half of the time ruler. To turn it off completely, deselect left click lock scroll. That's found in the track view menu under click behavior options menu. Clips can be split in several ways. Hold down the alt key and click with the smart tool at the point where you want the split to happen. Remember that if it is on, snap to grid will be followed here. Click drag with the alt key held down and the clip splits at the beginning and end of the selected area. Select a clip and press S to split it at the current now time, or right click on a selected clip and select split from the context menu. Here, there are several choices for a more selective or refined split. Clips can be combined by selecting them and select bounce to clips from the clips or right click context menu. The clips do need to be in the same track though. Slip editing is a way of making a clip shorter or longer without changing the clip permanently. Move the smart tool to the left or right edge of a clip and a blue line will appear. Click drag here to shorten the clip or increase the length. Although there is no data beyond the current length, it will be silent. Note that only regular clips can be slip edited. Groove clips or other clips will roll out instead. As well as moving the edge of the clip, it's possible to move the data. Hold down the Alt plus Shift keys while click dragging in the center of the clip. The clip stays where it is, but the data moves within it. Using the same key combo on the edge of the clip moves both the data and the clip edge. Note that slip editing doesn't delete the data, it just hides it and stops it from playing. To make a slip edit permanent, either apply trimming found in the clips and right click context menu, or use the bounce to clip method. Audio clips can be faded in and out using a similar method. MIDI clips can't be faded. This time, however, move the cursor up the clip edge towards the top left or top right, and a red triangle appears. The cursor also changes to indicate a fade. When this happens, click drag to create a fade on the clip. The length of fade is controlled by how far you drag into the clip. Once a fade has been created, there are two choices for applying a slip edit. 
Click above the small horizontal line to slip edit and the whole fade moves. Click below it and the fade length is adjusted as the fade start point moves. A fade can be adjusted or removed by click dragging on the red line that appears in the clip at the fade end point. That's when the cursor is over it. If you find that the audio waveform is small compared to the clip height, it can be scaled by left click dragging on the scale ruler between the clip pane and the track header. Right click on this scale ruler to change the scale used. Choose from decibel, zoom factor, or as a percentage. As well as manual fades, automatic fades can be created. Check the automatic crossfade choice in the track view options menu. Defaults can be set here too. With this option on, drag one clip to overlap another and a crossfade between the two clips is automatically created. The types of fades curve can be changed by right clicking over the crossfade. Clips can be stretched or shrunk. Switch to the timing tool and click drag on either the beginning or end of the clip and drag in or out as required. The change is indicated as a percentage in the top right corner of the clip. We can also listen to a clip using the scrub tool. Press J, then click and drag over the clip you want to hear. It will play back from where you click up to the cursor's current position as long as the left mouse button is held down. Change back to the smart tool or one of the other tools once finished. We've already seen how to move and duplicate clips using click dragging and the control key, and they can also be moved and copied using the standard cut, copy and paste command. Select a clip or part of a clip, and then either cut or copy it using the edit menu, right click menu, or the standard Windows shortcuts of Ctrl plus C to copy, or Ctrl plus X to cut. There are also advanced versions of these commands that allow copy and cut options to be set. If an option is greyed out, it means it isn't relevant to the currently selected data. You can't choose automation, for example, unless there is automation in the selection. Paste works in a similar way, but there are a couple of things to be aware of. First, the paste always happens by default at the now time and into the current in focus track. The advanced paste box allows complete control over the paste, including the track to paste into, where, how many copies, and what to do with existing material amongst other choices. I'll also cover the differences between linked clips and clip groups here, as they can at first appear similar. Once clips are linked, any changes to the content of one is applied to the other as well. Linked clips are indicated by a dotted line around the outside of them. For example, on an audio clip, reducing the gain setting used to the process menu affects both clips. With MIDI clips, adding notes to one adds them to both. Slip editing a linked clip only affects one though, as this is an action on the clip, not the contents. The only way to link clips is when they are copied and pasted. Editing a clip in a clip group edits all of the clips in the same way. Slip editing or fading, for example. A clip's properties can be changed using the clip inspector. Press I to bring it into view, and then click on the clip tab or press Shift plus I for direct access. You may need to drag the inspector to full width. Here, there are options to change various clip properties, including the name, start time length, and color used amongst others. There's also a second page on this tab for greater groove clip control. Finally, double click on a clip to open it in an editor. MIDI clips by default open in the PRV, audio clips in the loop construction view, and step sequencer clips in a step sequencer. In the top right hand corner of a regular MIDI clip, there is an editor indicator to indicate which editor the clip will use, and the default editor for the clip can be set here too. Click on the indicator to reveal a pop up where we can select editors from the piano roll, staff view, event list, or step sequencer.